After all, how long should we wait before training the same muscle again? Have you ever felt like the people you often see at the gym just seem to be getting better results? Could the issue be the intensity of your workout? Or are you giving your muscles too little time to recover and truly grow? A lot of people believe that the more time they spend at the gym, the faster their muscles will develop. But the body doesn't follow a simple more training, more results logic without considering recovery. In reality, the body works as a large system of adaptations. Each workout creates a stimulus, and that stimulus only turns into growth or strength gains if proper recovery happens. Otherwise, you might end up stuck in a plateau or even regressing due to overtraining, accumulated fatigue, and decreased performance. If you want to know exactly how long you should wait before training the same muscle again, stay tuned until the end, and you'll learn everything you need to know about ideal recovery intervals, training frequency, and how to adjust your routine to optimize results. The truth is, many people, especially when they first start going to the gym, feel an enormous rush. They want to train chest every day, biceps in the morning, biceps at night, and so on. I used to be like that, and you probably were too. It feels like if you don't push those muscles to the extreme without giving them a break, you won't see real gains. But what science shows us is that muscles grow during rest, when something called supercompensation happens. After muscle damage, the body works to rebuild the fibers, making them stronger and more adapted to effort. If you don't allow this rebuilding and strengthening phase to fully happen, you'll be interrupting your progress. The result? Instead of gaining muscle mass, you'll be stuck in a cycle of micro-injuries and won't advance as you'd like. To determine the exact amount of rest time before training the same muscle group again, we need to understand that several factors are at play. The first is training intensity. If you train very heavily with high loads, you create more micro-tears in the muscle fibers and therefore need a longer recovery period. On the other hand, if your workout is more moderate and less taxing, you might be able to return to the gym sooner and work that same muscle without compromising recovery. Another key factor is training volume. Sets, reps, and advanced methods like drop sets, rest pause, or supersets increase the overall stress on the muscles and require more rest time. Additionally, we need to consider the quality of nutrition and sleep. If you don't sleep well, your body doesn't properly release important hormones for tissue repair, such as growth hormone and testosterone. Nutrition, in turn, provides the amino acids from proteins needed to rebuild muscle fibers, along with essential micronutrients for recovery. When your diet is lacking or your sleep is insufficient, the recovery process is compromised and this directly affects how long you need to wait before training that muscle group again. So, it's not just about asking, I trained chest today, how many days until I can train chest again? If your sleep is poor and your diet is unbalanced, you might need more time than the average recommendation. Another extremely important factor is biological individuality. Every body reacts differently. While one person might feel ready to train back or legs again after 48 hours of rest, Another might need at least 72 hours. Variables such as age, fitness level, existing injuries or health issues, and even genetics influence how each individual recovers from muscle fatigue. So if you hear someone say, always rest exactly two days before training the same muscle again, remember that this can serve as a reference, but is not a universal truth. That number can range from 24 to 72 hours, or even more, depending on the context. Now, considering a general scenario, most hypertrophy training protocols suggest that for large muscle groups, it's ideal to have around 48 to 72 hours of rest. For smaller groups, like biceps or triceps, some athletes can return in 48 hours without issues, especially if the workout wasn't excessively intense. However, if you do a very high-volume chest workout, for example, you might need up to 96 hours to feel fully recovered. And here's the big issue. Those who train very frequently sometimes fail to respect these recovery signals. By insisting on a high-volume routine, they risk developing symptoms of overreaching or overtraining, which include decreased performance, lack of motivation, stalled progress, and even a higher risk of injuries. Once you understand that muscles need this recovery period, you can start planning your workout routine more strategically.
For example, instead of doing an extremely high volume chest workout every Monday and then hitting it hard again on Thursday, you could divide the workload into two lighter sessions. That way, you train the same muscle twice a week, but with a more moderate level of muscular stress in each session. This approach makes the total weekly training volume effective while ensuring a higher frequency of muscle stimulation over time. For instance, instead of doing five chest exercises on Monday and then waiting until the next Monday to train chest again, you could do three exercises on Monday and two on Thursday. This keeps the muscle stimulated consistently while also avoiding the fatigue that kicks in at the end of a long, grueling session, where you've done so many exercises that you have no strength left for the last ones. That's why, in most cases, this balance of volume and frequency proves to be effective for accelerating gains. The body tends to respond well to frequent stimuli, as long as they don't exceed its recovery capacity. Another common question. But what if I'm focusing on strength gains? Should I change my training frequency or not? Generally, the logic is similar because, whether for strength or hypertrophy, muscle tissue needs recovery. The difference is that in strength training, the loads are much heavier, and the joints also experience significant stress. Because of this, the recovery period may need to be longer, especially for advanced athletes who lift heavy weights. That's why having professional guidance and understanding your body's responses is essential in this process. Before we dive deeper into this topic, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, because having access to the right information is what will help you progress in the long run in the fitness world. As you start looking deeper into this subject, you realize that training periodization becomes essential. Periodization is simply a structured plan that organizes loads, intensities, volumes, and rest intervals over a cycle that can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, etc. This means you won't just repeat the exact same workout every week. Instead, you'll plan phases of higher intensity followed by deload periods or maintenance workouts, allowing the body to recover properly. This smart variation not only helps prevent plateaus, but also reduces the risk of overuse injuries and keeps motivation high as you continuously see progress. A simple example of periodization is this. For three weeks, you progressively increase the volume or load of your leg workouts, aiming for hypertrophy or strength. On the fourth week, you slightly reduce the intensity to allow your joints, ligaments, and muscles to fully recover. After that, you start a new cycle, possibly even adjusting the exercise distribution. This structured planning ensures that recovery is respected and that your muscles are always ready to respond to new stimuli. A lot of people completely ignore this concept and think they just need to show up at the gym and give it their all every day. Without a doubt, discipline and intensity are important factors, but without strategy and rest, the risk of stagnation or injury increases significantly. It's important to remember that every workout routine should have coherence. For example, if you trained back and biceps heavily on Monday, it might not be ideal to do an intense back workout again on Wednesday if those muscles are still very sore or if you notice a drop in performance. Delayed muscle soreness can serve as an indicator, but it's not the only factor to consider since good adaptations can still happen even without extreme soreness. The key is to assess whether your strength and mobility remain intact or if you feel weak and stiff in your movements. Another point that people sometimes overlook is daily stress. Factors like work, studying, personal problems, all of these affect recovery capacity. If you're going through a particularly stressful period with little sleep and high mental demands, you might need a longer recovery period between sessions targeting the same muscle group. The body doesn't fully distinguish between physical and psychological stress. It simply reacts to anything that causes imbalance by releasing hormones like cortisol, which can interfere with proper recovery. Because of this, analyzing your routine outside the gym and making adjustments is a key part of smart training. This brings up the famous question, can I train the same muscle more than twice a week? It depends. If volume is low and intensity is well controlled, some people can handle up to three weekly sessions for the same muscle group especially muscles with a higher recovery capacity, like shoulders and calves. However, this approach tends to work better for intermediate or advanced athletes who already have good physical conditioning, excellent nutrition, proper supplementation, 
and, of course, quality sleep. For beginners, the most common approach is to train each muscle group once or twice a week, always respecting reasonable rest intervals. For example, an ABC split, where you train three days in a row and rest on the fourth, can help maintain this balance. Speaking of workout splits, there are routines like AB, ABC, ABCD, ABCDE, and other variations, each with its own characteristics. In general, the more days you train per week, the more segmented your routine can be, allowing you to focus intensely on fewer muscle groups per session while still ensuring adequate recovery time. However, if your goal is overall hypertrophy and you only have three days a week to train, you can opt for a full body routine, repeating the same muscle groups in each session, but controlling volume and intensity to provide enough stimulus without compromising recovery. This type of routine can be very effective because the body is stimulated frequently, which, for beginners, often leads to consistent gains. The key takeaway from all this is that there's no fixed formula of rest exactly this many days. Each person, depending on their history, genetics, age, metabolism, and lifestyle, may need adjustments. That's why it's important to pay attention to your body, track your workouts and results, and even seek professional guidance from a personal trainer. With the right approach, you can avoid stagnation and learn how to balance training so that you're neither understimulating nor overloading your muscles. A common mistake is thinking that if you trained legs on Monday and still feel sore by Thursday, something must be wrong. Not necessarily. Sometimes, mild delayed soreness is normal, especially after a heavy workout or exercises that put significant stress on muscle fibers, such as deep squats, lunges, stiff-legged deadlifts, and heavy leg presses. What matters is assessing whether the soreness is just a tolerable discomfort or if it completely prevents you from performing movements correctly. If you're in significant pain, training over an injury or severe soreness can interfere with biomechanics, leading to compensations that may increase the risk of injury. On the other hand, if the soreness is mild, some argue that a lighter workout with increased blood flow can actually aid recovery by improving circulation and oxygenation of the tissues. Another question. Many people talk about active recovery and wonder if it's worth doing light walks, cycling, or even stretching, yoga, or other activities on rest days. The answer is probably yes. Active recovery can help relieve muscle tension, promote circulation, and keep you from being completely sedentary on your rest day. The key is to keep the intensity low so it doesn't turn into an extra workout that places additional strain on your body. One of the biggest questions for those focused on hypertrophy is whether they should always wait 48 or 72 hours before training the same muscle group again. While there are general guidelines, the most important thing is to pay attention to how you feel, your energy levels on training days, and, most importantly, whether you're progressing in your weights or reps. If you hit the gym to train chest and notice your performance is worse than in the last session, and there's no other factor like illness, poor nutrition, or stress, it's likely your muscle hasn't fully recovered yet. Adjusting by adding an extra rest day or slightly reducing your training volume can make a big difference in long-term results. And what about elite athletes who train two or even three times a day? Well, these athletes operate at an extreme level of conditioning, discipline with nutrition, and professional support that allows them to handle massive training volumes. They sleep more than eight hours a day, get massages, take ice baths, do physiotherapy, and have an entire recovery system in place. This is a completely different scenario from most people who train recreationally for health, aesthetics, or general well-being. Trying to copy a professional training model without having that level of recovery support is usually a recipe for injury or frustration. Speaking of supplementation, it's worth mentioning that some compounds can help with muscle recovery, such as whey protein, BCAAS, creatine, and others. However, no supplement works miracles if the foundation, proper training, adequate rest, and a balanced diet isn't solid. Supplementation is an addition, a complement, not the foundation of the recovery process. The same goes for advanced ergogenic aids like anabolic steroids, which require medical supervision and come with associated risks. Loading up on hormones won't help if you're not respecting the fundamentals of training and recovery. It will only temporarily mask planning mistakes 
and may lead to serious side effects. It's also important to note that as the years go by, recovery capacity tends to decrease. A 20-year-old with good habits may recover faster than a 40-year-old with a stressful work routine. This doesn't mean older individuals can't achieve great results. It just means they might need to be more mindful of periodization and rest intervals. The body changes, metabolism shifts, and training strategies need to adapt accordingly. Whatever your approach, remember that the key is adjusting volume, intensity, and frequency to find that sweet spot where the stimulus is enough to drive adaptation, but not so excessive that it hinders recovery. Weight training is a science, but it's also an art. It's the art of reading your body's signals, knowing when to push forward, and recognizing when to slow down to solidify your progress. If you become obsessed with training the same muscle every day, you'll likely end up frustrated or even injured. Your body sends signs of accumulated fatigue, such as overall weakness, loss of appetite, or irritability. If you notice these signals, you might need an extra rest day or a lighter recovery workout. On the other hand, if you go too long without a stimulus, you might miss the opportunity to optimize your gains. That's why finding a balanced middle ground is so important. Learning to develop this awareness is incredibly valuable for longevity and fitness and for preventing future issues. If you also want to know the six most common mistakes men over 40 make that stop them from continuing to build muscle, don't miss the video popping up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and may God bless you, my friend.